Okay, so I promised to do behind the scenes stuff. And right now it is just about midnight where I am. Um, I'm going to be up at probably around 7 o'clock in the morning for my, um, for my keynote tomorrow. So my keynote is actually at 9.15 uh, Central Time. But I'll be up tomorrow morning um, around 7. I'm sorry, I'm juggling the phone so much. I'm trying to do two things so I want to show you something. Um, anyway, so I'll be up pretty early. I actually have a photographer that's meeting me here in my room at 6.45, 7 o'clock. Um, he's going to be setting up while I'll be getting dressed. We're going to do some shots before I go downstairs. I'll be downstairs around 8.30. Um, so I'll be downstairs, you know, about 8.30. I, we already did all the stuff we had to do this evening. Um, and I'll be getting mic'd up and everything. I go on 45 minutes after that. I'm doing a 45-minute keynote. Um, a couple of things that I had to do tonight was, uh, number one, they had some last-minute changes. Not anything major, but last-minute changes to my slides that I had to do. Um, which isn't a big deal. I don't mind doing that at all. I, you know, one of the things that I did tonight was I went out to dinner with the client. Now I'll tell you why this is so, so, so very important. So generally you're going out to dinner with the people who are the decision makers, right? Um, and so since you're going out to dinner with the people who are the decision makers, you're kind of going to get an insight into the conference, into the people that, that you're going to be working with. And it lets you know like who they really are. They're going to let loose a little bit and um, it gives you some insight. So let's say you go out to dinner and everybody's like really prim and proper and they, you know, they aren't, they aren't using any dirty words or, or anything like that. And they're, they're super kind of like tight and uncomfortable. You might want to not start your event off in a super high tempo if you notice that they're like that because usually the leadership of the organization it kind of filters down through and it lets you know what's going on with the rest of the organization so if you go there and and the leadership is kind of like a little tight then you might want to just maybe not be too hype that was not my experience so the national association of broadcasters they have a very hype group they're super fun oh my god they tell jokes all the time they work really hard but they play super hard um, and so it kind of gave me a bit of a permission slip, you know, to go for it. And they even said like, oh, go for it. Like go, like, you know, they made a big deal about going for it and being hype. Right. And so maybe I was going to come in at a, like maybe a level seven and then go up to an eight or a nine or 10. Quite honestly, I'm probably going to go in at a level nine and I'm going to really push the envelope and try to go to 11, 12 or 13. Um, go a little bit beyond even probably my comfort zone just because they are such a hype group, which I love. I love being able to push the envelope. I love when my audience wants me to push the envelope. I love when my um, the my client that I'm working with wants me to push the envelope, right? One of the biggest things that and the woman I'm working with said is she goes, listen, you're a professional. I trust you. She goes, I look at all your stuff. I love all your stuff. You could literally read the phone book and I'd be super ecstatic. So when you have that kind of, you know, that love and, and her saying, you know, I want you to be big and bold and different and, you know, I want all your Don on stage. When you hear something like that, it does give you that permission slip to go for it and you're not so nervous. Um, and I don't mean nervous, but you're not so worried about doing a little extra so because some clients don't want the little extra some clients just want you to um, just deliver exactly what it is they ask for and nothing extra and da 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 she's really clear like she's like no nah, let's do this right so having someone like that that you're working with is really really exciting those clients come along once really once every now and then and when you get them you're just like yay I really get to give you guys um, probably something that I've never given anyone else. And that's the other thing that's cool. Because she's so hype, it get, gives me an opportunity to give her um, content that I've never given anyone else, right? So they're getting something, you know, just not even, I don't want to say brand new. It's content clearly that I know. But, you know, they're getting a, a keynote that no one else has 
ever had an opportunity to hear because she was so open and trusting and said, you know, I want us to do this. So that was really cool. I want to show you a couple of tricks that I do in regards to my slides because um, not always when you're giving a presentation do you have a confidence monitor. Um, not always do you have um, anything that's with your notes or that's going to let you know what's coming up next. So I do want to show you something that I do with my slides that for me is super ridiculously helpful, especially in big venues where they have like a TV monitor in front of you and then they have the slides off to the left and right. Now, if the TV slot monitor is down in front of you, it does not necessarily mean it's a confidence monitor. It just means that you don't have to turn around and look what's on the current slide. All it shows you is what's the current slide. A confidence monitor would not only have the current slide, it would have the notes for the current slide as well as the next slide. Um, so not always do you have a confidence monitor. In fact, most times you don't. So what do you do in order to keep up with what's coming on to the next slide? So here is one of my tips. This is one of the things that I do. I'm gonna share it with you on my screen right now. So here's one of my slides and you'll see all the way down here in the corner, this little tiny like note in the corner and I'm gonna show you just various different slides, right? So if you'll notice, right, the next, it says homeless teen. Okay, so, um, my next slide is about homeless teen. And so then if you look down in the corner, it says became COO. So now if you look over here, you'll see the next slide is became COO. And so what I have down here are these little teeny tiny notes that I can see them from stage, by the way, I can see them, but I know what's coming up on my next slide just by having those down there. Now, this happens to be, um, 30 slides. So I know for each slide, I have a minute and a half. For me, it's super simple math. I know exactly if, you know, if I'm on slide 10, that I should be 15 minutes into my presentation. Um, so it's a way for me to keep up my mental timing as well. So I have, um, so I know what, what slides I'm on. A couple of other things that I do is over in the other corner, I didn't do it for this one just because I don't need it. But over in the other corner, I will have um, the time to know what time this slide is supposed to be done, right? And so if I know this slide is supposed to be done at the one minute mark, then I'll have a one. So I'll have one minute, three minutes, five minutes, whatever it gets to. That is a great way for me to manage my time sliding as well. My slide timing, it ensures that I don't go, um, if I've gone too long on a slide and I see the difference between my slide time and the clock time, then I know I have some catching up to do. There's nothing worse than being late getting off the stage. If you're supposed to be up there for 30 minutes, you need to be at the 29 minute and 30 second spot and getting ready to get off that stage. Um, the event planners do a lot of painstaking work to get things working in a very timely manner. And when you go over, you have just thrown months of work out the window and now they have to go and fight a fire that you caused which is a total unnecessary fire for them to have to fight. Like they should not have to be dealing with um, your inability to manage time. So you need to be the best time manager ever. For me, this means that there's two things that happen. If I go on stage or if they say, Donna, we want you to speak from 9.15 to 10 o'clock. And let's say for whatever reason, I don't, they don't get me on stage until 9.35 then my first question to them is, do you want me to go until 10 or do you want me to deliver a full 45 minute speech? Because those are two different things at this point. You need to know exactly what your client wants. Sometimes you're gonna have to cut things back because there was a time mishap. It happens, not everyone's a professional, but you still need to be. So this means that you have to be totally aware of your time. You have to be aware, is it gonna be a half an hour? Is it gonna be 45 minutes? Do I cut if they run late? right? Or do they still want me to do the whole thing? You need to ask them that no matter. And I ask them that by the way, before anything goes wrong. Like when I go down there and I'm doing my mic check in the morning, the first thing I'm going to ask Anne is what would you prefer? And sometimes they'll say, you know what? Um, if we're like five or 10 minutes, I just want you to go and 
we'll make up the time somewhere else, right? I've had clients say, listen, if your content is hot and they're loving it, I'll give you an up to an extra half an hour, right? And and they will give me the sign to keep going. Um, then I've had other clients that go, listen, I know you're supposed to give a 45 minute speech. We only have 10 minutes left. Cause so I'm just going to need you to do 10 minutes. Right. And so you as a professional just need to be prepared for that. And it does happen. Um, so like I said, some of my tips are, I do have little notes, teeny tiny notes down in the corner of the slide. No one's ever noticed them, but they're there. I think they think they're page numbers or slide numbers. And then down in the other corner, I will have slide time. So I'll know what time that slide is supposed to be up. And it's, it's literally just like to the minute time. It's like, not like three minutes, 30 seconds, you know, it's like one, five, seven, 20, like whatever it is. And then the last thing that I do is I always, always, always take my iPad and I always have my iPad down by the front edge of the stage. I know, baby, I'm getting ready to go to sleep, but I pr promise you guys some behind the scenes. This is all my behind the scenes. Um, anyway, I have my iPad down at the, at, the, at the base of the stage, right down in front where I can see it. Now, you're going to say, oh, but doesn't your audience see it? I swear to you, they don't even notice it's there. And so it's usually down in front. I might have it over to the left or the right a little bit. But what I do is I turn off the um, the um, thing where it goes to sleep, you know, so it just stays on. So I keep it on and then I have a timer there. And so that timer, so I either have a timer or a clock. So if they say, we want you to be off the stage at this time, like at 10 o'clock, then I use a clock. If they say, we want you to be off stage after 45 minutes, then I use a timer. The reason that I do that is that most conference rooms do not have a clock, right? So they don't have a clock. You don't necessarily always have a clock on your monitor, right? And so there's no way for you to know what the time is or how to keep up with time. So making sure that you just have an iPad just sitting right there in front with a clock on it, with a timer on it, makes all the difference in the world. Um, so those are little things that I do to make sure that that again, the magic is happening, right? So time is one of the most important things that you're gonna deal with in regards to being a speaker. How much time, think, how much it takes for, <laughs> I know, right? There's no clocks. Seriously, if you, go, if you go to most conference rooms and hotels, they do not have clocks. There is no clock anywhere to be found. And most big conferences happen in hotel rooms. And people wonder why they get all messed up on time. That's because people don't manage their time. And professionals should know how to do it. And I've seen professionals go way the hell over. So I make sure that I'm really clear about managing my time. So you're going to have to manage your time, your stage presence, your audience, your messaging, what comes next on your slides. Like you are responsible for all of that stuff, as well as making sure that you're bringing all your energy and entertainment and everything you know, coming up, what is your walk-on music? Why does that walk-on music make sense for that audience? What are the things you're going to do? What is your walk-off music? Why does that music make sense with what you closed with? Um, okay, so that's that's what I have. So tonight, like I said, going to the dinner was really important, making sure that I went and modified my slides for what the gentleman had asked for, um, adding those little things down in the corner, adding the, the time down in the corner, um, sending the slides off, making sure that he got them, some things that happen, by the way, when you go from Keynote to PowerPoint, for example, is that the fonts might get messed up. So I needed to make sure that I sent him the font file, not just the slides, but the font file as well. Um, and then I'm going to go to sleep tomorrow morning when I get up. A uh, photographer is actually going to be here 6.45, 7 o'clock. Um, he's going to be setting up. So I'll give you some behind the scenes of that as well, of the photographer getting here and getting all set up. So I'll show you how that whole thing works. And um, that's everything I got for tonight. I'm actually going to go and, oh, the last thing, how do you get to sleep, right? Because I'm like super hyped and excited about this event in the morning, but I know if I don't get any sleep that that would pretty much suck, right? So yes, he'll be here at 645, which means I have six hours and 45 minutes to sleep my ass off. And so, um, and he's coming that early because he needs to set up, quite honestly, it only takes me about a half an hour to get ready, 
right? Like shower, hair, everything, it, makeup. It really only takes me about a half an hour. He's coming early because we're doing shots. So I got to get up early and get get ready and everything. Um, anyway, so last thing, how do you get to sleep? How do you actually get to sleep when you're really hype and excited? Okay, so here is kind of my, my three things that I do. Number one, I have a five milligram melatonin which five milligrams is going to give me a good night's sleep, but not make me drowsy and feel all nasty in the morning. I also know Xanax. I also take magnesium because magnesium is also a natural way for you to go to sleep. No whiskey. And then I set sleep sounds. Um, I prefer um, the sound of rain, but I set sleep sounds. The reason sleep sounds work and people always wonder this is because what will happen is when you're really excited about something, your brain will turn on and your brain will go, oh, now that it's time for us to go to sleep, I have these 10,000 things that I would love to share with you. And then your brain just kicks up and you cannot fall asleep, not even if you take melatonin and um, magnesium. So I take melatonin, I take magnesium, I turn on sleep sounds. And then what I really do is I focus on the sleep sound and I it helps me turn my brain off so I can actually fall asleep. Otherwise, yeah, I'll be up all night. So that's all I got. And the other good thing, by the way, about getting up at 6.45 in the morning is just in case my um, my PowerPoint, my AV team that's downstairs, it's making sure everything's perfect, just in case they have some issue, some challenge or whatever that they didn't work out because they're working pretty late too. Um, but just in case something didn't happen, you know, just because I sent them my files doesn't mean they worked on them immediately. There are other people as well that they're, you know, stuff they're working on. So they might not get to mine until like super, super late at night after I'm asleep or, you know, first thing in the morning, I need to be awake and checking and making sure that everything's okay. So these are all the things that you have to think, care, take care of, right? It's not just you know, showing up, putting on a pretty smile and talking, there is a whole business back of back of the room business that's happening that you want to really start, you know, you want to really be thinking about. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys for tonight. I am actually going to go to sleep. I'm going to have some lovely melatonin, which I should have taken 15 minutes ago. Some melatonin, some magnesium. I'm going to put on some sounds so I can fall asleep. Um, oh, and I set three alarms. Yes, because I am a little psycho about that. It's one of the reasons I can't sleep sometimes is because my brain says, excuse me, my brain goes, what if you miss your alarm? What if the electricity goes off? What if you didn't charge this? What so my, now I got the hiccups. Now my, my brain will start thinking about what if I can't wake up or what if something happens and I sleep through my alarm, especially, and I would say, especially in the in an early morning one, but not kidding you, it has happened even when I have something at two o'clock in the afternoon. For some reason I go, what if your melatonin was too strong and it made you really sleepy and then you fell asleep and it's just stupid stuff that my brain does. Um, so anyway, that's one of the reasons I can't sleep and that's one of the reasons why those sleep sounds definitely work and they really do help me um, fall asleep stay asleep and then wake up well rested and refreshed without feeling all like, you know, that groggy feeling. Um, anyway, that's all I got for you guys tonight. I will see you first thing in the morning, 645. I'll see you guys then. Make sure you're up. Make sure you're, it's 645 Central, so 745 um, East Coast. But make sure you guys get up with me so I can give you some more back of, back of the um, uh, behind the scenes. Don't Don't sleep in. Don't sleep in. And if you're really worried about um, sleeping, getting uh, waking up in the morning, I always have the hotel. So that's my that's my other alarm. Is I have the hotel call me anyway at six forty five and wake me up. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.